Hi. Let's talk about some of these uh, new things that have been added in here. So, last time we covered the um, basic player controller, and I moved some things around, but everything here should be exactly the same. I think the only things that are slightly different is we now have a set respawn point graph that will just take the position of the guy and immediately set that to be the graph variable for the start position. And any time that he hits something that does the kill box, has the till kill box tag, it'll reset the player to the start position. And there's also one more thing, which is um, anything that happens to have the respawn tag will reset the start position to the new position. So we'll show that in a second. But those are pretty straightforward, I think. And um, we could use these for teleporters or whatever. But at any rate, the, um, the hot new thing here is the state machines that do floating platforms and also the dropping blades that we've put together here. So um, the floating platform is uh, it's pretty much exactly as the uh, as the professor Marty Clayton had des designed it. Um, this one has um, a object variable that's set up for distance um, instead of just manually setting it which means that if I duplicate the floating platform and put it in a place where I want it to float further out or not so much, I can just um, change whatever the object variable is. I'll have to create a new object variable on every object that gets the script, but that's pretty much the state of it. Now I've actually created a second macro, a little flow macro here. This is the macro for sticking to the floating platforms. And at first I had a whole thing where it would check to see if it was the player, and if it was, then it would make that, it would make the player object the child of the moving platform. But why? It should work for everything, right? Everything that makes contact with its little uh, volume. So essentially if anything makes contact with the platform, then it will become the child of the platform. And as soon as it stops being contacted, it will stop being the child of the platform. And this works uh, very well. So this is my fairly simple graph for that. And I, don't, I can't really make it bigger, but that's it right there. That's I put that on basically everything that I think is going to need to stick to a, fl a platform. So that's my stick to platform uh, graph. Now, um, this was my flow chart for um, moving platforms. And it works. Um, but obviously the, the one that we've got for the, the state machine is much more simple. And we also have now the dropping blade graph. Now the dropping blade graph is exactly like the floating platform graph. The only difference is it moves down slower and goes on the y-axis, right? It moves up fat, or yeah, moves... How am I, what are we doing here? This is, this must be down, because down is fast, right? And goes positively. Maybe actually, maybe this is down. I can't really remember. But anyways, the, the big one goes fast, right? So it goes fast down and then slow up. So this one must be down. And it's exactly the same. There's, ex this is all exactly the same as the moving platform, except for it's getting Y instead of getting X. And I have exactly the same thing going on here with the object variable, where if I create a new one, and it doesn't have an object variable already on it, I'm not just duplicating it from another one, then I have to arrange it myself. So if I want it to fall further, um, then I have to arrange that myself on a, on, a, on a new object variable. But this works just fine. And then the only distinction besides that is the moving platform obviously has a volume on top that's a trigger that says this is a moving platform. Well, this thing has a very small uh, volume at the bottom of it that says this is a kill box. So if I get hit by the blade on the bottom, then I'll reset to my spawn point. So let's play some let's play some video games and we'll see how this works here. Um, I actually don't think I can. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, I mean, yeah, let's maximize it so we can see it all in action, I guess. That's probably the best way to go about it. Okay. Um, yeah, this is what happens when you decide to use a new computer. Oh, thank you, new computer at school. So, you know, I've still got my all my player controller stuff. Now, here's some spikes that have the kill box on them. Directly underneath these is the pit kill box that I didn't remove, but these are, you know, these are also a, a trigger for resetting to the spawn point. Um, there's one of the moving platforms. If the, if the moving platform doesn't have the platform sticker thing on it, then the player would just slide out from under it. Uh, because I've set them all up to be... Everything is frictionless, so that when I jump on the wall, I don't sl stick to it. Okay, so here's a, here's a moving blade. And it's just a cylinder they squished. Um, now, of course, if you use the whole volume, then doing this will cause you to, to die, right? Or touching the side of it, like like this. And we don't want that. We just want the bottom of the blade to be the thing that causes causes the death. So um, so that's the case. If I, if I let the thing fall on my head, or if I even jump into it, it will you know, chop me in half, or whatever. And there are a few there are a few of those around um, throughout the level. Uh, they can also make for these kind of things where you kind of wait for something to move out of the way and then you can go. You could do pretty much exactly the same thing there. And I'll just whoop, get up there, come around here. Um, my little checkpoint is right here. So after I go through this door, um, then every time I... Every time I fall to my death or get hit by another blade or whatever, uh, it will reset me to the middle point of these. It's actually two levels from Ninja Gaiden, but there's another little floating platform there. But drop to my death, reset to the new checkpoint. So yeah, that's pretty much it so far. Um, yeah, those state machines are a lot less complicated than than the one the one that I had where was mine? Uh, this one right here, yeah. Pretty complicated. I'm glad I don't have to use this thing because I had to I had to manually configure it every time as well. So yeah. Anyways, that's it.